Bruce McConnell of Locomotive Systems Training. Welcome back. And today we're going to talk about Locomotive Orientation Episode 2. That's LST002V. Now remember from last week's video we talked about Locomotive Orientation and the importance of the letter F. Well I've got one little thing I want to mention to you. If we're in the cab of that locomotive and the letter F is on the long hood end of the locomotive and you're sitting in the engineer's seat what happens? Now, just about virtually everything changes. The front of the locomotive now becomes the back of the locomotive. The back of the locomotive now becomes the front of the locomotive. Your left side is now the right side of the locomotive and your right side is now the left side of the locomotive. So, that F is very important to understand. Oh, and by the way, uh, component identification changes too. Remember the long hood? Everything goes from the letter F, one, two, three, four, five, six on traction motors and cooling fans and everything else. So I just want to throw that out there just to remind everybody how important locomotive orientation is. Okay? Okay, so today's video we're going to talk about locomotive subcomponents. Remember, we're going to have three major areas. We're going to have the cab, the short hood, and also the long hood. So let's start in the cab. We're going to look at the control stand, seats, sun visors, windshield wipers, heaters, air conditioners, coated cab signal, crew alerter, air brake equipment, positive train control, blue card, fire extinguisher, first aid kit, safety and informational decals, and the refrigerator. That's all in the cab. It's a pretty busy place. Down here in the next one is the short hood, or what we call it as the nose compartment. We're going to talk about the toilet, air vent, electrical cabinets, spare air hoses, sandbox, front, and safety equipment. In the long hood, we're going to talk about the main generator compartment, the diesel engine, radiators, air compressor equipment, rack, which has the filters and everything else, and the sandbox in the rear. This is what we're going to talk about today. Mm -hmm. All right, so the first thing we're going to talk about is the control stand. This whole structure right here is called the control stand. It's mounted very firmly to the floor, and it has a lot of components that we're just going to talk about here right now. Let's start right here. Right over here is the air brake equipment. The automatic brake valve is right here. This valve controls the brakes on the locomotive as well as the, as the brakes on the train. Second of all, we have an SA26 independent brake valve, and that valve here operates the brakes on the locomotive only. Automatic brake valve, independent brake valve. We also have over here that works in conjunction with the air valves. Up here we have some meters or, or gauges. Over here we have the main reservoir and equalizing reservoir gauge, what they call a duplex. Uh, uh, gauge and on the right over here we have another duplex gauge that holds brake that shows brake pipe indication as well as brake cylinder pressure and way over to the right we have what's called the load meter and the load meter tells you how much amperage is, is the main generator is putting out for tractive effort or dynamic braking if that locomotive is equipped with that okay now we also have a radio up above here we also have let's see well, down here in the corner, almost hard to see, uh, we have uh, a, what they call an MU2A, and that conditions the locomotive for lead or cutout or trail. And we come over here and we have a reverser, which is right here, and the reverser fits in there, and that gives you your, your either neutral or your forward or your rear. And over here we have a power throttle that goes from idle all the way over to notch 8, which is our maximum. If this locomotive was equipped with dynamic braking, it would have a lever very similar to this one here, and it would go right here. We have various, we have a sanding valve, we have a, an alerter button, that's very annoying, I'm guessing to the operating crew through the engineer, and down here you can almost, not quite see it, but you can a little bit, that little kind of gold color little valve is the uh, bell. And up above the bell here, straight up above, is the valve for the horn. Okay, and this little box right up here is what they call the FOT front of train and the EOT, end of train device. That's what this little box does. It communicates with the back of the train. Also over here we have a little bitty box off to the side that provides an audible and a visual indication of the crew alert. So the light kind of goes, starts to go off after so many seconds and then you'll hear an, an audible sound, a little wobble sound, and that's what that's for. And over here next to this is the speedometer, also what's known as a barcode speed indicator. So let me see, we also have different switches, we have headlight switches over here, we also have push button 
uh, uh, switches here that give us, we push them, and that gives us indication that the circuit is okay. We have like a PC light, sand light, uh, and other devices, how that locomotive is equipped. Uh, I think I've covered just about everything here. And of course, that's the micro microphone for the radio up here. Next, we're going to talk about cab seats. Cab seats, here we have a, a pretty good indication of one right here. Uh, depending on what the locomotive is used for, you might have one cab seat, you might have two cab seats, you might have three cab seats, and on the big, big main line units, you might even have many as four seats. Okay? Now, again, most typical seats, bottom cushion, back cushion, right arm rest, left arm rest. They adjust height and also swivel, and they also lock into place. Okay? Cab seats. All right, the next one we're going to talk about is going to be the sun visors. Mm -hmm. Sun visors, okay, right over here. Had to take a quick look. This is where the sun visors are. The sun visors are required to be there by federal law because the sun can interfere with the operation of that locomotive and freight train. They have to be able to work properly as intended. So but yet most cabs will have at least probably three sun visors, one, for, one or maybe even two for the engineer, and also some on the center window, and also at least one for the conductor on the conductor side. So that would be sun visors. The next item would be windshield wipers. Okay, and again, federal law states that whatever condition this locomotive is operating in, they have to have, you know, have clear visibility, whether it's both shining, sun, or in the rain. Okay, so what will happen is this right here, this whole mechanism here, this arm, this radius arm goes over, and you have the windshield wiper. That clears the rain away, so the, the operating crew has a clear view of the track. It has to be clear. Okay, the next item we're going to talk about is cab heaters. Over here we have the engineer's cab heater, and it's mounted to the floor. It's got a little switch right here, off, low, I think medium and high. And the, the heat goes in here, it comes out here at the bottom, and also goes over out this duct, over and up to the windshield defrosters. Also, they have what they call a wall unit cab heater right here, and it's a radiation heat that, that goes along the bottom and probably underneath somewhat of the, of the seat for the engineer. So you have radiation heat as well as, as, as also heat from this, this cab heater. To go on the other side of the locomotive, or the cab, you will have a heater that's mounted in the wall right below the, the emergency brake valve. And again, you have a couple of switches here, and you have a switch here that you turn for, for crew comfort right there. So that would be the cab heaters. The next one we're going to talk about is going to be air conditioning and cab vents. Okay. This particular locomotive didn't, was not equipped with air conditioning, but it does have cab vents. There's one right here on the conductor side. There's also one located over here on the engineer side. So, and again, they have to work. Some locomotives are equipped with a, with a safety item, electronic safety item known as coded cab signal. Coded cab signal uh, allows the locomotive to run in a specific track that has a signal from the track that responds to action in the locomotive. This particular locomotive doesn't have it, but if it did have it, it would have a little uh, light bar that would be mounted on the front wall with different color of red and yellow and green. So that would be code of cab signal. Uh, crew alerter, crew alerter, as we said before, like on the previous slide, we have that little bitty box over here. That would be the crew alerter. And what that does, it's a vigilance system. And what it's designed to do is make sure that the engineer responds to this alert signal every so many seconds so that the system knows that the engineer is, is alert and not incapacitated. In the event that the alerter is that alerter button, in this particular case, it, this one here doesn't have it, but that yellow button that we talked about earlier, if, if, it, if the engineer did not push that button down every time that alerter went off, then the crew, the, the vigilant system would recognize that and it would put the locomotive in a penalty brake application and the train would stop. Okay? And this here is the automatic brake valve. We talked about that earlier and the independent brake valve as well. Remember, locomotive and, and box cars, SA26 independent brake valve is locomotive consist only. Okay? Next we're going to have the blue card. This is a federal document. It says right here, government property, do not remove. Hmm. What that means is every locomotive has one of these in the United States and the railroads do not own this document. The federal government owns this document. 
So there's a front side and there's a back side, and they all have to be filled out with all the proper information on them to make that locomotive legal to run on, on the railroads in the United States. Again, back part of the cart, front part of the cart. Okay. Uh, the next one we're talking about is a fire extinguisher. Every locomotive has them, or supposed to have them. Okay. And here's an interesting tip. A lot of people think that the fire extinguisher falls under federal jurisdiction. It actually doesn't. What it is is most states, the fire extinguisher is controlled by the state fire marshal. So the good news is, though, the railroad industry does a really good job of maintaining these as far as that it's in proper place and it functions as intended. So that's fire extinguisher. And uh, now we're going to talk about the first aid kit. Every locomotive should be required to have a first aid kit. Okay, and that's, that's your kind of first responder uh, tool. You open it up, you get bandages, wraps, you know, gauze, that kind of thing, to get initial first aid treatment going, okay? Every little one should have that, and that first aid kit should be complete and sealed, okay? Another thing that's interesting is locomotive cab signal decals. These are your requirements by the federal law as well as the state in which that locomotive operates. For example, fully equipped FRA part 223 glazing refers to the windows. That means that all the windows in the cab of that locomotive are up to date on the latest type of, of glassware for that cab. That's what that states. This here has the uh, engine emissions uh, sticker on it right here. Okay. The one over here, <coughs> excuse me, is an auto start sticker. That locomotive is equipped with auto start and shut down. And this one over here shows the electric motive, uh, the engine family that this type of locomotive is and when it was manufactured. And down here, so in the state of California, you have the Prop 65 decal that states there may be certain chemicals on that locomotive that may cause cancer and other problems. So if, they, if they're on here, they have to be legible and readable. Okay? Ah, the next item. This is a what they call a cab refrigerator. It's located right in this area, right in here. There's a lever to open it up, and you just put your water, your lunch, or whatever else you want to do, and away you go cab refrigerator. Now, some railroads have them, obviously, here's a picture of one, but some railroads don't do that. They actually use an ice chest or an ice bucket, and uh, they work pretty good too. So, all right, let's go to the next one. Now we're going to talk about the short hood. Let's talk about that. Okay, the short hood of the locomotive, otherwise known as the nose compartments. Now, what you'll find out is that most locomotives will have a toilet in there. However, some railroads don't have them, okay? Um, each locomotive, each locomotive will have a toilet, and in the nose compartment, you also will have a nose compartment vent. Usually it's, usually it's in the ceiling, like this one is right here, but some are also mounted vertical on the engineer's side of the, of the uh, nose compartment, okay? So that's that. Now, in here, we also have electrical components in here that deal with whatever electronics or a lot of electronics that, that locomotive is equipped with, they will actually install them in the nose compartment. Here's a good example of those right here. Okay. Uh, okay, also we have the sandbox. The sandbox is low. This is the front sandbox, by the way. The front sandbox is lo located in the nose compartment and it holds the sand for when the locomotive needs additional traction. So that's the sandbox. Now to fill the sandbox, you can actually come up the nose compartment locomotive and right here is the lid to access to put sand in that front sandbox. These right here are clean out uh, circles, you can take these out and if the sand is wet, because wet sand doesn't flow, you can open these up and you can also open this up and you can get the sand out of there and put clean dry sand in. Okay? Okay, let's go to the next one. All right. Safety equipment that you're going to find in the cab of this locomotive. Okay, here we have a speedometer. Okay, we have the speedometer. This guy here works in conjunction with this guy here. Okay, this guy here is where you actually set the speed and you also calibrate it inside this box here. Over here, again, we have the refrigerator. We have a handrail here too for safety, but also right here on the conductor side of the locomotive. We have what's known as an emergency brake valve. This emergency brake valve was used when the conductor sees something on the track that they don't want to run into, 
So what he'll do, he'll grab the handle and pull it up and dump the brake pipe to zero and that will stop the train and give you an emergency brake application. Those are all the safety devices that we have here so far. Okay. Now let's talk about the long hood end. The long hood end of the locomotive, which we talked about in the last video, uh, you'll have a main generator compartment or alternator, depending on if it's an AC locomotive or a DC locomotive. Okay? You walk out of the rear cab door, down I think one or two steps, and you'll come over here and there's a big door you can open up, right there on the running board, and when you step in, you'll step in and this is what you're going to see. You're going to see a, a platform right here. This wall right here is the actual back wall of the front electrical cabinet. Okay? Over here we have the main generator sump. Inside here we have all the connections for the traction motor leads. And right back in here is, like I said, the main generator or the main alternator. That's what that you'll find. Now, also, what you'll find up in here up above, you'll also find like a traction motor blower, main generator blower. And depending on the type of locomotive, they're either shaft driven or they are standalone with, with their own AC motor. You'll find that on AC locomotives only. Okay? Let's go to the next one. Okay, now we're out on the run board. We close the door on the main generator. We're going to walk down a few doors. We're going to open the top and bottom car body doors. Be careful. Pinch point. You don't want to get your hand caught there between the handrail and the door. You open it up, and this is what you're going to see. You're going to see this EMD diesel engine. It can be anything from a, from a V12 to a V20 engine depending on the railroad configuration of it. So you walk out the door, open these doors up, put the flat platform down, you unsnap these, and that gets you access to the top deck of the engine. And this engine, like I said, is, you know, depending on it, it may be 2,300 horsepower, it might be 3,600 horsepower, it may be 4,400 horsepower. It just depends on the configuration that the railroad has. Also, these right here are covers, airbox covers, these ones here. And also down below it, what they call crankcase covers. Okay, air is in this area here, oil is in this area here. Okay, all right. So you step further back, open up a few more doors, and then you go into what they call the compressor, air compressor compartment. And here's an air compressor. It's a two-stage air compressor. Okay, and this compressor uh, is very efficient. Does a really good job providing all the air. Remember, locomotive uses a lot of air for a lot of different things. Let's see. Run the air brakes, you run the wipers, you run the bell, unless it's an electronic bell, you run the operate the horn, uh, you operate a lot of magnet valves for like sanding and, and other devices. So this guy really makes that locomotive come alive. Okay? Uh, and especially stop. That's really important. So we have low pressure, high pressure, intercooled, okay? Uh, this compressor will pump up usually around 130, 140 PSI. That's your cut in, your low end is 130, your cut out at high is 140. So this is what you'll find here. A little cross bracing going on here for car body stability. And uh, that's it for the air compressor for now. Okay, over here we have air brake equipment. This is what they call a 26L air brake system. Got all kinds of components down here which down the road we're going to talk about uh, just like I said that all these all these components work together to provide the proper braking that this locomotive and train needs to operate cor correctly. You will find this compartment right underneath the door right below the engine where the engineer sits. Okay? Ah, and again we talked about this. Here's our cross bracing here. Again that's for stability of the car body way at the back. Uh, this is really kind of cool. We got a nice MU, which stands for multiple unit. As an MU cable, and it's located, it's stowed properly. It's not laying in the air compressor compartment floor, as that sometimes does happen. Again, we have the rear sandbox right here. Same thing. We got the, we got the clean out holes right here and right here, and the sand here is used for the rear truck when we need sanding. Car body doors, and here we have. If you look way up here, you'll see two great, probably four inch pipes going from the radiators back to the to the uh, to the engine for 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 getting for completing the circuit. Okay, so if you look at what we did last week, the orientation, the letter F, and if you look what we did this week, we took all the major subcomponents, I think what we call them, right? Subcomponents, and we kind of just gave you an idea of what's in the cab. We also gave you an idea of what's in the nose compartment or the short hood. And we also gave you an idea of what's carried out in the long hood of that locomotive. 
So stay tuned next week. What's going to happen is we're going to start talking about this guy here a little bit. Okay? Yeah, I want to thank you for, for uh, reviewing our video today. And if you get a chance, why don't you go to our website and check out the classes that are available. And that web address is lst-ca.com. And thank you and have a safe day.